two, one. I always do that. Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with the Magic Brad Show. And I made the connection. Rafael, Ro Ro how do you say your name again? You got it perfectly. That was it. Rafael. My name is Rafael. Rafael. I did it right. Rafael. Yep. Yeah. That is cool. And it's, it's hard to, to, when you see the letters, it's hard. It's me. It's just me. Yeah, because I look at them, makes perfect sense to me. So I can't, I can't see it from it's the very, other It's very unique. Where's the, what's the origin? It's actually a Hebrew name. So uh, that's, that's the direct pronunciation from the way you would pronounce it in Hebrew. Okay, cool. I got Brad. I'm not sure where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do some research. It's one of those four-letter words. But yeah, that just is. Actually, it's Bradley officially, but uh, I like Brad better, and I use Magic Brad so I don't get confused with the Brents and the Bryans. So, Rafal, what part of town are you in? Um, I'm from Chicago. Chicago. Chicago, Illinois. That's not really the Windy City because of the wind, is it? No, no, it's, it's a different reason. I it's a that. yes, it's political. It's a political reference from I'm not even going to pretend I remember. I learned about it once. <laughs> I think we're in the same boat there. We just know that it's not that breezy out there. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I'm in Minneapolis, so I guess we're both like the chaos capitals of the world right now, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Absolutely. My message Sorry. to someone listening, stop it. Pete, <laughs> stop it. Oh, my God. It's terrible. So... I forgot how we got connected, but I did a little poking around and uh, so it looks like you're a life coach. Yep, I am a life and business coach indeed. I think that maybe you are looking for people to Is help that people radio guest list? from home. Yeah, probably people who are you know doing businesses or startups or yep. something like that something to do with sales. And um, that's something that I help my clients with. So well, I, I like that you're doing lifestyle and business, because in my opinion, that's kind of the way that it is these days. And for me, it's always been I've always been self employed. I was the, the kid that used to go buy candy in bulk and then resell it to my classmates at a profit. So I've always been in some kind of business. Yeah. So actually, I, I see it very much being the same thing, life and business coaching. Um, but I'd like to hear from you, like, what, what, where do you see the connection in that? Like, how did that make so much sense to you? Well, I think that, it, you... that being self-employed is different than being an employee where you punch a clock and you're, you're limited in your wages and you're limited in the time you can work. Whereas self-employed, you can kind of do whatever you want. It's, it's harder, requires more discipline to be able to get yeah. out of bed in the morning and get it done. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. it, it is also a lifestyle. Like my, my wife was a Spanish teacher at the University of Minnesota for many years. So her season mm -hmm. is what it is. And now she's self-employed. And it's a little challenging for her. She doesn't see working on a Saturday and a Sunday. And she doesn't understand that maybe going on a vacation and getting some work done and taking advantage of those tax benefits for when you're doing work while you're in Hawaii. So she doesn't see that. But um yeah. I kind of like my life is my work and I don't always, it's not, what, who was it that said something like, if you uh, love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah. Yes. I heard that one. I don't know who it's from. I know. Many I can't remember. That, but yeah. It makes no, it's sense. very true. It's, it's, it's very true. And that's why I really, there, there's a complete overlap. I mean, if people are struggling with their business, there's something going on in the way they're setting up their life or the way that they're structuring yeah. themselves and, completely um one and the same so definitely i love that i love that you saw that off the bat i have a friend that teaches golf he coaches people in golf and he would his his market was the c-level executives and before they even swung a club they would sit at this boardroom table and talk about stuff and oftentimes it would come down to why is when he swings the club why is it slicing and going into the woods all the time he could never figure it out so all of a sudden he realized that he had a little thing with his secretary going on was on the edge of ruining his marriage. So when he cleaned that all up, the golf ball went right down the fairway. Yeah. <laughs> so there yeah, are I other love that. things. Yeah, you got to keep it all. It is kind of a holistic kind of thing. But I was going to ask you, because I hear sometimes people talk about work life balance. Mm -hmm. Are you an advocate of work life balance? Um, I would ask you to clarify what that means. I'm glad you did that. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just. 
being able to like, you know, when you when you got the kids and stuff, you can unplug from work and spend time 100% with the kids. To me, it's not balance. It's more about harmony because I don't think there's such a thing as balance. I think everything's always in flux. So it's, yeah. uh, just realizing that sometimes you got to work. Sometimes you got to be at 100% with your loved ones. You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think that that's exactly it. I also don't understand this uh, balance thing. Um, there's, you know, I... I am self-employed, so I will officially, my official hours are until 6 p.m. I don't make calls after that. That's my family time. Mm -hmm. I don't view that as a, as a balance. It's just what I've dedicated for my kids, you know, and I can decide if I want after my kids are sleeping that do I want to have another, do I want to make, do I want to make some more time that'll be working time, but so to me, that's just like, you know, maybe boundaries, maybe that's what people say about balance. But if I'm working now, and these are my work hours, and let's say my kids are off from school, well, I have to decide, I have to pick between one or the other. I can't work when my kids are around. And I also have to decide when am I going to say, okay, kids, figure something out yourself, because this is my work time, or I'm going to say, let me revise my schedule to work for when my kids are more off or stuff like that. So I, I don't call that a balance. That's you know, maybe, maybe it is, but like you said, that's kind of just harmony, how you're going to arrange your life and how do you want it to look? More discernment maybe. Yeah. Realizing that, you know, the kids, uh, maybe they could go and they can play on their own, but maybe they really need me right now. So the, you know, it's a matter of priorities and things. And that's the nice thing about being, self-employed is you get to make those choices. And I'll, I'm yeah. assuming that sometimes you have clients that go, you know what, I really got to get this done. And I feel so guilty that I can't play with my kids. Yeah. Gotta, yeah. I, I have that. Yeah. I have that. And um, I was just coaching a woman uh, two weeks ago who wanted to make use of being self-employed to spend more time with her child, except that to her, that meant that she has to be with her child all day. And there was no time to work. And there was, like you said, that kind of guilt that, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I don't get this time so often. But, you know, that's not, that's, that's the, I, I want to say not healthy. I don't want to, like, be any harsh or anything. Your child, you don't have to be with your child all day. And part of working yourself, if you want to make your own hours, you're going to have to find a babysitter for however many hours, two hours a day, where you can sit and focus on your work. You can't work. And both times I actually coached her two sessions she had her child on the lap on her lap the whole time and it, it doesn't work like that so you're you're choosing right to not be clear with you might want to call it boundaries or with what you want if you want something there's got to be focused work time and focused family time mm -hmm. and it just comes from making that choice what what do you want to do or at times, sometimes you get creative and maybe you decide that, you know what, I've got this kid that I got to take care of right now. I'm going to blend that into my marketing plan and show <laughs> that it's all about that. That way, when I buy the kids clothes and stuff, I could probably write them off on my taxes. This is <laughs> so you could get creative with it. I mean, I, my brain does that. I got this Gemini mentality with my left, right brain. And like, I, I save time when I, um, I got a martial arts background. So most people, when they get my age, the knees kind of go because you use your legs a lot. And what I do when I shave, I shave in the shower. Okay. So I put a mirror about chest level. So every morning when I shave and I shave almost every morning, I have to do a squat, which strengthens my oh, knees every single day. Very smart. So it very helps me keep strong knees and gets the job done with shaving the face off. <laughs> that's, that's, very, very good. I'm so very I, I do similar things like that with my business and things. Like uh, when, I, when I have to walk the dog, I will take out the phone and I'll do a Facebook Live as I'm walking the dog, a little selfie talking about marketing and, and daily ritual of walking the dog or whatever. And so I'm sort mm -hmm. of parlaying something on top of something else to get the task done and get the job done. So I'm doing yeah, lifestyle. Yeah, that's, that's great. For sure. Some people don't think of that. So I'm a, and. I'm an advocate of coaches. My wife is a coach, like I said. So I think oftentimes it's good to have someone like you that can give someone that insight because they're stuck in their box and they're yeah. thinking, okay, I've got to take care of my kids. I got to make these phone calls. I got to send these emails. I got to take care of my kids. And you could go, here's an idea for you. Cause you could see right. it from the outside. Right. That's what it's all about. It's just seeing it from the outside. And 
And a lot of times, and this is what I help other coaches with as well, is that it's, um, it's all about that outside view and understanding, getting really clear on what the problem is first before one starts giving advice. And I'm going to say 80% of the time, just getting that clarity and helping the person get that clarity helps them realize that there's no problem in the first place. So instead of kind of jumping into problem solving, it's like, I still don't understand what you're struggling with, right? So I understand, you know, um, you got to do these emails, you got to make these phone calls. So, okay, so if I were you, you know, why aren't we taking care of these emails? Mm -hmm. And then it might be because there's all these pressures. My kids are always disturbing me. Okay, what, you know, why are we not like having five minutes where we just answer emails? There's, there's no discipline, like you said. There's no structure. But from the outside view, it's like, I mean, to me, everything's pretty obvious, right? The puzzle, I don't see a puzzle here that needs putting together. Sure. Most of the times I love, I love talking with people and just the less I understand that there's a problem here, the more the client sees themselves that it's all in their head. And when they speak it out, they're like, oh, you're right. You know, I don't, I could do, you know, like you're right. saying that's, X, that's, Y, and Z. That's where it's a mental block kind of thing. So they they yeah. say thinking outside the box. I like to say thinking without a box. Because yeah. the problem with it, I think it was Einstein said, uh, you can't solve a problem with the same mind that created yes. it. Yeah. Yes, yes, and definitely. There's a, there's a couple guys over in the UK that have a thing called solutions focus. Okay. Where that's where you're focusing. Rather than fixing problems, because then your mind's thinking about the problem. Right. You just erase that, do an etch-a-sketch thing and throw it aside and go, what's the solution? How can we make this work? Yeah. And sometimes a person can't do that because they're so in their problem, especially if it's a, a lifestyle family thing, they're emotional. Yeah. So they just hang on to it because it's some kind of emotional, like you yeah. know, with mothering or guilt or whatever. Or yeah. Same thing with fatherhood. I'm not providing for the family. I got to work. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, I actually also just had a, a coach I was speaking with last week who, who found himself, you know, his, his coaching took a long pause because, you know, financial stuff. And he had a son that he was taking like custody of. And when he actually got his son for an extended period of time, it made him feel worse that he didn't have this envisioned, you know, brand new house to, to have his son in. And he thought that his son was always, you know, looking at him like a failure. And I'm just like watching this whole story go on. And I was like, okay, so after that whole story is over, what's, what's really true? I mean, is your son, even if your son does say something, are, are you factually failing as a father right now? I mean, I don't, I hear you doing the best you can, or, or are you not? And if you're not, what do you need to do? Sure. But all the, you know, projected stories. And, um, you know, when I, when I, I recently moved a, a few months ago into a new apartment and I had zero furniture, zero anything. And I, for, you know, for a little bit for, I'm going to say like a few minutes, I was like, Oh my gosh, how do I like bring my kids over? And they're going to be like, what, you know, how, what, what are we even supposed to do here? And instead I realized that if I don't have a problem, then they won't have a problem with it. Sure. They might like it. And and before I got, I mean, now it's fully furnished. Before I got any furniture, I just had a piece of carpet on the floor. I had some toys I, and they played. I have great pictures from them. We had a great time because I didn't think there was a problem with that. And therefore they didn't either. And that's, that's the, the strength that we have over the other people in our lives as well. That we create our own problems by making it an issue. Yeah, and I think... Um to your testimonial uh, you need you a coach is somebody that can see that stuff sometimes you can't see the forest through the trees or whatever that saying is <laughs> they're so wrapped up in their problems that they don't realize that there isn't a problem you're making yeah. it up in your head and the kids yeah. are having a great time on the carpet yeah <laughs> oh, yeah boy. that's exactly it all, all the only problems are the ones that we create with our own thinking sure. because like you said anything that might be factually a problem is more just like what is the solution here is a challenge to find a solution for but never something that we're stuck with if there is no solution then there's no problem totally and um problems i mean that's what they're there for is to be solved so you just got to figure out it's like a combination lock you figure out the combination then there's no problem <laughs> yeah yeah but do you have any specific 
a niche group of people you like to work with? Do you prefer men over women? Do you have an age bracket? Do you have industry I don't, or anything? No, I don't have a niche. I, I spent a lot of time in the beginning of my coaching actually uh, doing that. And I realized that what that was holding me back from, stop, from helping as many people as I really could. So I, I help men and women of all ages. I'm going to say I don't do teenagers or kids. I do a responsible adults who are going to take responsibility for their own life. So act like teenagers. Not, yeah, I don't care if they act like teenagers because I could say, you know, you're acting like you're 15 and you're 30, but you can't tell that to a 15 year old because they are 15. So am I going to ask, ask them to step up and be an adult? No, you could be a hormonal teenager. That's fine. So, um, uh, yeah, so I don't have a specific market. I usually, you know, a, a bunch of my clients are other coaches who are, who are building their own businesses. I have clients who have, you know, businesses in other industries and we work on sales and kind of stuff like that to really do a all, all, all range of people. Well, it's good to hear that because that's kind of my challenge is I try and get into a niche because then it's easier to market to because you know who you're talking to, but in, inevitably... You know, I was focused on the event industry. I was in events, mm -hmm. hospitality, travel, and tourism. That was mm -hmm. March 4th when I had my expo. Then all of a sudden mm -hmm. this COVID thing came along. There mm -hmm. are no events. There is no tra travel. There are no mm -hmm. tourism. So I thought, what am I going to do now? So I pivoted and I decided to go towards event mark or uh, affiliate marketing. Mm -hmm. And then people just end up coming in like yourself. You're in business, but you're also a lifestyle. And that seems yeah. to go where I'm kind of going too. It's like, I don't necessarily want to be in a specific lane because I like to see the stuff on the outside too. Yeah. So, so to that, I would say is, and this is something that I, that, I, that I help a lot of other coaches with, which is where they get stuck, is that having a niche is only for you to know who you want to focus on in terms of your direct outreach. All businesses, I believe, can succeed in this, in this model of connecting with people on an individual basis and offering what you have to offer if it makes sense, as opposed to kind of, um, you know, pitching yourself out there or hoping for people to see your ad, especially, it depends, you know, if you're in a service industry role and you're not selling necessarily a product. So then it's something that people can get to learn about what you do through knowing you and experiencing you. True. And therefore, I don't need a niche for that. I get into conversation with whoever I want to get into conversation with. And if I wanted to have a niche and I wanted to only uh, coach women, so I'll only get into conversation with women about whatever struggles, you know, that I relate to in them. But yeah. the biggest thing, you know, what I feel like when you were reaching out or when I saw what your show was looking for in terms of, how to succeed in business during this time. I mean, now is a great time to really focus on building those connections with people, reaching out to people and finding out what their needs are. And that's why I can coach anyone. Because if I see somebody talking about something or I get into com conversation with someone and they mention something that I know we can talk more about, then I have the opportunity to say, I'm a coach and I can help you with that. Do you want to talk more about that? Sure, because a lot of stuff will go overlay, and you, I guess you got to just be careful that your niche doesn't become a rut. <laughs> right, which most people does. Most people, their niche does become a rut, and they feel so um, bound in by that, even though they'd like to help other people. They'd say, well, my niche is only this, and, you know, and I, I don't you know, have expertise in the other area. But that's also something that I'm very strongly against, because if you're in conversation with someone, somebody feels comfortable enough talking to you about whatever it is, even something that's not your niche. And you say, Hey, hold up, stop the conversation. We can't talk about that. I mean, you're destroying the trust there. You're making it about you than the person who's sharing with you. And, yeah. and especially with coaching and, and like lifestyle and business that you're saying, if there's issues in the business, there's issues in the home life. The way you do one thing is the way you do everything. So it's going to show up in all areas. You don't need to be an expert in every area to be able to give someone that outside view and help them by just listening. And I think there could end up being like a third entity that comes into play when you start two people communicating about something, all of a sudden they come up with a new idea and hey, maybe yeah. go that direction. So yeah. So 
the other question I was going to ask you is do you just do like you just I'm, I'm assuming now everything's online but you do like live one-on-one -on -one type coaching uh, all my coaching person? is all my coaching is on the phone or on video even before all this started um it's it's uh easier that way we get more time that way there's no like time constriction that has to do with like tr traveling oh sure and it also, I have clients all around the world, so it doesn't have to, doesn't have to be local that way. Um, I do, you know, when I have offer people coaching packages, there is like a, a opportunity to meet live for a couple hours where we have like an in-depth co um, coaching session mm -hmm. just for longer periods of time. But in general, all my coaching is, is on the phone. Got it. So here's the, the big question is how do we get a hold of you in case someone hears this thing and they says, you know what, I'm going to work with Rafael. They can ready? find people. People find me on Facebook. That's the best best way to find me. Um, and uh, I I'm, I'm active there. And uh, yeah, that's what I tell people. So I will. I think I found your website on Facebook. And then what I can do is I can. My website is not active. I actually took that down because I believe websites, at least for coaches, just. Uh, take away the opportunity for people to actually get to know you and have a personal experience. That's a, that's a interesting, my website is a page now. It's just got a way to get a hold of me and find who I am. So I, I hear yeah. you on that level. So if they know how to spell your name, they know how to find you. It's a real yeah. Wolf. yeah. I've got a bunch of uh, videos on YouTube also they can search my name for. So it's uh, it's really not that difficult. Okie dokie. Well, when I put this on YouTube, then that's what I'll do is I'll get your name spelt correctly. So when they look below, they can exactly cut and paste it and find you just like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much for being on the Magic Brad Show. Perhaps we'll do another one of these down the road. There might be some kind of new niche or, or, or rut we get in. We might want to travel down that lane. So I appreciate you taking the sure. time today. Thank you, sir. It's my pleasure. And thank you so much for having me.